The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OA, the host of the Last Three Brain Cells, and the host of Twin Tamiya's on Oreo Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on Local Voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube. A lot to talk about this week. we got two guests this week here for for Collins for, Collins for football season, and also we're going to talk um, the girls' basketball coaching situation at Troy. They just had a new coach in Laura Guzman, so we're going to talk that as well. So let's talk to our first guest here. He is the head coach at Ferndale High School. He is Coach Eric Royal. Coach, welcome. Thank you for calling in this week. Hey, Sammy. Thanks for having me on the show today, man. Well, it was a pleasure being here. Um, when you look at Ferndale, obviously when you look at the Eagles, you know, there was, there was a time they were 22-8 and eight the last um, – Three years, and then la- and then last three years they were nine and sixteen. But you got in the playoffs last year. Um, so when you look at the Eagles, um, look at the recapping of last year. Obviously, you you were um, you made the playoffs. You scored two hundred forty three points. Um, you know, you allowed two hundred thirty six. So give me a brief recap of last year in your eyes. Um, last year, I think was a uh, combination of just some of our younger players maturing. Um, not only you know the at the as upperclassmen get into their, you know, sophomore, junior seasons, um, but also just a, a, a combination of us figuring out how to get back to what we used to do. We got back into our weight room program, which was very, very uh, helpful for us in the past when we were winning a lot of games. Uh, COVID kind of, you know, stopped us from really getting after it in the off season like we wanted to. But um, last year we got back very close to what we were before, and then this year we're really taking it you know, to the next level. So I think last year was just a combination of us just growing and going through some of those younger uh, growing pains that we had a lot of freshmen and sophomores playing early in the earlier in their careers. And now we're, we're back to having a senior and junior led teams on our, on our, um, on our roster. When you look at last year and I think, you know, and I think, and I think that's where it goes to, you know, the 22 and eight, um, when you look at, this team and and obviously when you look at Ferndale, they are known for their line play. Obviously, you got a lot of experience coming back. Talk about some impact players up front that can make some noise this year for you guys. Oh man, our our our, our offensive line is looking very very strong this year. Um, it's going to be anchored and led by Lavar Croxton. Croxton, he's going to be a three year varsity starter for us this year. Uh, he will play. Um, right now he's penciled in to play the right tackle, but he is a very versatile player and he will be able to play on all five spots on the line if we need him to. Um, we also have our, re- our returning senior, um, center. He's going to be a three year starter this year, DeMarco Walker. Um, like I said, he's started our last two years and he's expected to have a breakout year this year. He's had a great off season. Um, and then we also have an up and coming, uh, junior tackle. Um, he played varsity last year is Randy Royal. He's actually my little cousin. Um, but he has all the measurables, 6'4", 6'5", 260 pounds, great athlete. Um, he's looking to have a breakout year this year as well. So those are some of the three guys that we're looking to anchor our offensive line um, coming into this season. Um, of course, obviously, we've got skilled players. Obviously, um, your quarterback situation. Um, Leander Neal, it looks like, according to my notes, looks like your starting quarterback. Um of course, um, you also got some good players as well. You got Dakari Smith, Antonio Jones. Um, talk about those three guys. Yeah. Oh, uh, Dakari Smith. I'll start off with him. Um, he is he is going to be uh, very special for our players this year. Um, he is a very versatile player. We're not sure where he's going to start. Is he going to start in the slot? Is he going to start as a running back? Um, he just has that kind of versatility where he ha- he's just good with the ball in his hands. So we're still in the process of figuring out where he's going to start the game at, but plans are to get the ball in his hands as much as we can in open space and let him, you know, operate. Uh, we also have uh, another receiver, Jaden Mills, who um, we're very excited about. He's a returning starter for us. He actually missed uh, four games with a leg injury last year. So he's back and healthy, had an amazing offseason. Um, so we're really excited about him uh, coming in at the right receiver spot. And then our leading receiver coming back next year is also returning is Leander Neal. Um, he was our, he's our re, re, leading returner, uh, receiver coming back last year. He was our second receiver last year behind Corday McAllister. Um, he's going to be a senior and he's going to, uh, anchor that, that right receiver group this year. Who's going to be your quarterback this year? I mean, you talked about Leander. Um, I know that, um, he's played some receiver. Um, who's your quarterback going to be this year? 
Uh, we actually got a transfer in. Um, Cullen Hawk is his name. Uh, he's transferring in from Bloomfield High School. He's already enrolled in Ferndale and cleared and everything to go. Uh, he was actually forced to sit his penalty last year, but his family has some some things they were dealing with and they wanted to move school. So um, he's actually attending Ferndale now. Um, he is a really talented quarterback, will be a junior this year. Um, and he potentially can be one of the better quarterbacks I've had. Uh, in my tenure at, at Ferndale, he is a true quarterback. Um, very excited about having him on our team, especially for the next two years. And when you look at, of course, Ferndale, of course, a lot of people look at the Eagles known for their defensive secondary course in linebacking core. Ferndale, of course, one of the uh, most unique defenses. I think one of the most underrated defenses in the entire um, in the entire league. I mean, like, so when you look at Ferndale, um, Talk about your um, secondary and your linebackers. Obviously, when you look at them, they've been a strength of you guys for the last few years. Yep, yep. Um, and it's going to be another strong group this year. Um, and honestly, like we're the last two years, Sammy, we've been very, very young. I mean, in the last two years, I've only graduated ten seniors. Um, my twenty twenty five class is twenty five kids deep right now. Um, that's all been playing varsity for multiple years. So we have just been, you know, going through those growing pains. But this year, we're going to have, you know. Uh, all juniors and seniors at the linebacker position, led by LeVar Croxton. He's going to be a middle linebacker this year as well as playing on the offensive line. Um, and then with Antonio Jones as a returning starter, Bryce Ferguson as a returning starter. Um, and then we're still looking for another outside linebacker to really take hold of that, that final spot. We have a few candidates, but they're still working out that competition aspect right now throughout the summer. Um, but I'm very, very excited about our linebacker core and as well as our, de- our, our defensive backfield. Uh, throughout seven on seven this year, this is um, and this is always subject to change, but it's very optimistic going into the season where none of your wide receivers play DB, none of your DBs play wide receiver, and so is your linebacker. They're all one way players. We were able to do that in seven on seven, which gets a lot of reps, a lot of uh, time to teach these kids different techniques and schemes. So we are very excited about our back, our back end of our secondary, uh, led by Darnell Lee. He's a returning junior cornerback. Um, and we also have um, Gary Maxwell. Actually, Gary Maxwell is going to anchor our defensive backfield. He's a, he's going to be a three-year starter for us on at cornerback. Um, he's only going to be a junior, but he has seven career interceptions already. Uh, he started, what did we start, 19 career starts already uh, in his career. So he's a very experienced player and looking to have a breakout year this year as well. Um, when you look at program strength, obviously, when you look at Ferndale, um, how was the sub odyssey levels going for you guys? You know that's still that's still one of our weakest points in our in our um, in our program. Our numbers are low. You know, being only having you know uh, 600 kids in Ferndale and another 400 at, at UHS. A lot of our UHS kids don't play football. We do get a handful every year, maybe 10, but we're not getting a lot of numbers still as of yet. So um, we're still trying to build our, our 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 younger our lower levels up. But our off season program involves all of our things. So. We're getting our player development. It's just we have to we have to really work really hard on making sure we can get that in game experience for our players so that they can come into the varsity level uh, ready. But I, I'm, I have a lot of confidence in my coaching staff um, that we're 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 going to do what they need to do to get our younger kids ready. I think a lot of people also, and here's an interesting question for you. Um, when you look at the postseason, people are going to say, "Well, Ferndale, you know, they look at the enrollment of the kids. Um, you know, what with how many kids they have. I mean." I mean, normally you're in Division Three or Division Four, but with Ferndale, you guys are in Division Two for the playoffs. I mean, last season you guys were the last team in Division Two. Um, now, explain to our viewers, you know what I mean, why you guys are in Division Two instead of like being in Division Three or Division Four. Yeah, because um, the state has granted us a, a co-op, a co-op program, which we have a, a another high school within our district that doesn't have the means to create a football program or the funding to create a football program. So the state was allow us to co-op. It's a very small school, has about 400 kids. Um, it is just, it's, 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 it's a more academic school, but we do allow the kids to play there. So we have to account their enrollment. So that's another additional 400 and plus kids that it puts us over that 1100 threshold. So that's why we are division two, which is a challenge, but we're, you know, we do what we got to do. We're not complaining. And off, it gives our, all our kids in the district an opportunity to, to compete at a varsity football, which is our main goal is for opportunity for our students. So um, that's why we did division two and we're just going to roll with the punches. We have some very hard opponents that we made in the playoffs in our five appearances, but um, what can you do about it, but show up and play and uh, work hard in the off season, try to get better. You played CO last year in the first round and it, 
wasn't a good feeling. Um, following that game, forty six to six. Um, when you look at your schedule this year, I mean, like, you know, you guys have been known for playing really good opponents, really tough opponents. I mean, like, you open up week one, Macomb Lance Cruz. Then you have a top matchup at Holly week two. Um, then you go into league play. Um, we're going to talk league in a minute here, but I'm looking at your non-conference. Um, week seven, you go to Oak Park. That's going to be another tough game. I mean, week eight, you take on Groves. And then week nine, you take on St. Clair Shores Lake Lakeshore. Um, oh, yeah. And those are some those are some tough, t- tough teams, especially when you have to play like teams like Oak Park, Groves, and Holly are in that schedule. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, that's just that's you know the two O Park and um, O Park and Groves games are crossover games, and every game in the OA, you know, you're going to cross, come across some very talented players and teams in our league. So those are expected. Um, we definitely got to bring our lunch our lunch boxes and pails to that game because uh, both of those teams are very proven. They play in at higher divisions in the past, um, so we're definitely uh, known that's going to be a hard fought game. But uh, like I said. Some things that we're changing in the off season that I think is going to really help us take that next step in the uh, in this season. In terms of Lance Cruz and Lakeshore, obviously we met with them last year. Um, I was really disappointed that we didn't we were able to win the Lance Cruz game last year. I felt like we controlled that game most of the game um, and only lost by one point in the final second. So looking forward to t- getting another shot at them and hopefully we can come out on the right end of uh, of that of that game this year. Um, and then Lakeshore obviously is another tough team that's going to have a lot of talented kids. Unfortunately, we had a good night. I mean, fortunately, we had a good night versus them last year. Um, started off very slow at a 14-0 lead in the first 90 seconds of the game, but we kind of settled and came back and won convincingly. So uh, we expect them to be another strong team this year. Um, yeah, I mean, our, our, it's, it's the OA. And then when, you, when we're trying to get ready for the playoffs, you want to play some of the tougher teams in the state to make sure you can get a good measure and stake on if you're ready to compete in the playoffs. So that's our schedule, and – we're ready to attack it. Thoughts about playing Holly Week too? It looks like it's going to be a very interesting game. I mean, you know how good the Broncos have been. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Holly. Uh, we we had a chance to watch them on film last year first uh, Royal Oak, and I'm also uh, very familiar with their coach, Coach Keen. As you know, he's yep. he's been in the OA yep. at multiple schools, so um, very familiar with him and what he likes to do. Um, and I know he's going to come with a very good team, very well coached team. So um, we know we're going to have our hands full, and we're going to we're going to have to come ready to play. Yep. Um, talk about the division. I mean, obviously you're in the gold this year. Um, one of the favorites in the division when you look at it here coming, of course, you got to deal with them. So I want you to talk about every team, you know, in their, in your division, um, what your thoughts are on each team and, um, you know, and like, um, what do you look forward to seeing, you know, out of those teams? So we're going to start off with, um, we're going to start off with your arch rivals. Um, we're going to go with, um, with Royal Oak first. I mean, obviously, you know, you look at what, Royal Oaks, Ben. I mean, like they've been a neighborhood rivalry for years. So, what's your thoughts on the Ravens, Coach? You there? Mm-hmm. Coach, you there? You kind of. Bro- yeah. yeah, I kind of broke up. I'm sorry about that. It's all right. Yeah. Um, talk about your rivals. I mean, obviously, um, you look at um in the gold. You look at Ferndale. You look at um. I so you look at Royal. I mean, talk about your um thoughts. Your thoughts about the division. Obviously, you look at you look at um. We know the gold this year. Um, so talk about, I'm going to have you break down your thoughts on each team in the division and, and like, what is your thoughts on each team? So yeah. my first, my first team is Royal Oak. So what's your thoughts on the Ravens? Um, well, I mean, obviously, I mean, if you look like our, our, our scores in the past years, um, regardless of the overall records of each team at the end of the year, it's for some reason we just play each other really tough. I don't know if because the, 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 the players know each other off the field, uh, interact with each other outside of football or whatnot, just the rivalry there is always seems to be a tough game for us. Um, so, you know, I, I, spe- I, I don't know a lot about what they're going to do based off their coaching changes. I know they did have an in-hire, um, I mean, a, a in, in-house hire. So um, I just expect them to, to play the same tough football that they do versus us every year. Um, so that's, that's my thoughts on Roll Oak. I don't know a lot about what they're going to do program wise with their new, with their new coaching changes. However, um, I just know that they always play us tough, and I'm I'm not going to look over them at all to to definitely make sure that we're ready to play when we when we meet Royal Oak. What about Berkeley, the other arch rival? Of course, um, last year was kind of a little rough year for them. <laughs> yep, yep, and uh, you know, and I, and I know Coach Shields here he'll, he'll he'll get his team back ready to play this year. He he's another really good coach in our league, uh, and they have a lot of talent in that school. So I'm I'm expecting Berkeley. You know, it's funny though. Um, 
I haven't matched up with them a lot. You know, our game in the past got canceled for a forfeit because of COVID. Um, then a couple of years we played them, but I'm looking, getting back to really playing them on a consistent level every year and having those battles. Um, Sean is going to have a good team. I know he is. Uh, he's a good coach and uh, they have a lot of talent. So um, they're going to be, they're going to, they're going to be at the top of the list in terms of competing for a league title as well. Um, what about, of course, Pontiac, obviously, you know, Pontiac's had their struggles. Um, you know, new coach coming in and Wendell Jefferson taking over. Um, what is your thoughts on the on, on Pontiac? Um, you know, obviously, you know, I, I obviously, you know, everyone knows that if you've been playing Pontiac that they have had their struggles. Um, but I know that the one thing I give them credit for, they show up every week and play. They have a ton of talent on that team coming back and starting with their quarterback, um, who I know is a really good kid. If they, if the, the new coach that they have coming in there can bring some consistency of their guys, you know, showing up to practice and stuff like that, I expect them to have a lot more success this year um, and, and potentially win a few league games if they can rally their, their players to, 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 to really believe and buy into what this new coach is asking them to do. They have the talent at, at Pontiac. They just have to put it all together. And then, of course, I think a team that's been giving you the biggest fits has been Avondale. I mean, obviously, when you look at the Yellow Jackets, um, Avondale and Ferndale has kind of really developed as one of the most, like, underappreciated rivalries in the entire league. Um, so talk about how you guys match up with Avondale you know, and, and your thoughts on the Yellow Jackets. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a team that we played for the league championship last year. The winner of that game uh, was going to win the league. Um, we were fortunate enough to come out on top that year. Um, as you know. Hmm? Coach, can you hear me? Um, so they're yeah. definitely on our radar. Um, we know what kind of program Avondale has over there. Um, and then bringing in their new coach who's had a ton of success um, in his career at, at different schools. Um we're very, we're very, very uh, aware that, you know, they're going to be a solid team and we're expecting them to come in ready to play, which we could play them at home this year, but we got to go to Avondale um, and we'll be ready. Um, and I'm sure they will be too. So that's a good game for all the football fans to come on out and uh, and watch a great night of football versus two uh, teams that are, um, I expect to be playing at a pretty high level this year. It's kind of funny when you look at the um, history between you two teams. I mean, like, um, you know, usually there was a time that the road team actually won the game there. You know what I mean? Like, and then, yep. you know, you've, and then you broke the, um, you broke the stretch. I mean, like, you know, so when you look at, when you look at the, um, when you look at the, the division this year, um, last year you guys won the division, but you guys were sweating it out in the play. You guys were sweating it out. I mean, like, how was that? How was that? That was very, very unusual. You know what I mean? Like for a division team. For a division champion, almost not to make the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, we, well, you know, we lost we lost two games um, in our non-conference by a total of five points. We lost one, one, one point to Lance Cruz and four points to Troy, who were both playoff teams. Lance Cruz went to the regional finals. Um, so we were we were five points away from being a seven and two. Um, obviously, we lost very convincingly to West Catholic, and you know, um, and and Farmington High School uh, beat us in uh, our crossover game, but. Other than those two games, I feel like we were very close uh, to being a seven and two team last year. And with our with our talent returning and our growth and just maturity of our players becoming upperclassmen, I'm very excited about you know what we're. Um, we only like we only graduated six seniors. Mm -hmm. Before that, so we've had a lot of kids playing varsity for their freshman, sophomore, and junior years that are all going to be seniors and juniors now. Who we think we're we're very very about you know, the potential we have as a football team right now. Before I let you go, Coach, um, you, I mean, when you look at expectation, I know you got media day coming up. Um, when you look at what do you want people to view Ferndale football this, up, this upcoming season? Well, one of the things I think we haven't talked about, Sammy, is we made some big coaching changes this offseason as well. Um, you know, we I've actually uh, um, turned over the play calling duties I've, I've did for the last nine years to uh, my new offensive coordinator, Mike Legro, who was the head coach at Cross Lexington the last past three years. Um, his teams were ranked as high as number two in Division Two last year, I mean, Division Four last year. Um, he has been a great addition to my staff. Um, we have jailed very well. We have a lot of the same similar ideas on offense and uh, also program-wise. Um, I am very excited to implement his new offense and how we're going to run it. Uh, it's not going to be that power run game that you've seen in the past. We'll still be very strong, but we're going to open it up a little bit more. 
um, and speed the tempo up a lot. Um, and also brought in a new defensive coordinator. His defensive coordinator from Project and Lex, Mike Sheridan, has come over as well. So I'm I, I'm in a new role as well with stepping back from the X's and O's, and we're really going to cut, collaborate on that, and I'm going to more manage the program and make sure that operations are running right, the team is is, 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 is functioning like we want. But with those two new coaching additions, I am extremely excited about the uh, the season and what, it, what our team is going to look like. Um, we have a lot of smart football minds on our staff right now, and I am I am just I'm just biting my fingernails getting ready to get to August. Um, any uniform changes at all that I need to know about? I mean, obviously, you guys um you guys went to brown helmets last year. I was really imp- I was really happy about that. You went the all white look, and then you had like a brown and yellow look. Um, any uniform changes at all this year? Nope, same uniforms. Um, however, we are we still we haven't made the final decision yet, Sammy. But we're debating. Either we're going to keep the brown helmets, but we're debating either go brown face mask or gold face mask. Ooh, it's um, good. We're, we're, yeah, we're going to, we, we have a couple helmets in right now that we just ordered to have the gold face mask that really give it that pop that we're thinking about uh, switching all of our helmets over to. So that might be a surprise come media day, seeing what face masks we might have on our on our helmets. You know I grade football, and you know I grade on uniforms. You know that on the blog. You oh, see yeah. that. Oh, yeah. And – you know, I've I've looked at your uniform history, and I've really lo- enjoyed your uniforms. I've really have. You know what I mean? Oh, I mean, yeah, I'm, look, I'm, actually, I'm actually driving past our field right now, Sammy, and we got a brand new turf field going in. It looks great. looks It looks it looks uh, wonderful. So, um, we're looking. We're we're definitely excited about you know having our brand new football field to start the season as well too. And of course, you do open up the year against Macomb Lance Cruz, um, Coach Eric Royal. Thank you for joining us on the pod this week. Um, you know, best, best, best of luck to you this season, and I'll see you at Media Day. All right, thanks for having me again, Sammy. I'll see you soon. Yep, you too. Sure. Yep. So when you look at Ferndale, I mean, like, obviously, you know, a lot of expectations for the Eagles. A um, lot of expectations. And they're one of the, they're the reason why they're one of the favorites in the um, division this year um, in the gold. So we'll see what happens. All right, now we come back. We're going to talk to um, a new coach here. Um, um Coach Sean Shields of Berkeley. So we're gonna, we're gonna take a break here on OI Now. Welcome back to OI Now. Here I'm Sammy Termina here. Um, we got Berkeley coach Sean Shields here, of course. And coach, um, welcome back to the pod here. It's been I think we've been doing this for three years now. Yeah, I think that's about right. Sounds uh, sounds accurate. Yeah, I mean, like last year it was like, what the heck happened here? I mean, you were twelve and six going the right direction, and you go two and seven last year. So what the heck happened? Um, unfortunately, we just didn't mesh well last year. Um, we brought in a new OC and, um, the kids just weren't picking up the playbook. Um, you know, unfortunately we had some guys that, you know, had some offers and, uh, decided they didn't need to come up to the weight room and it just, we, we need to hit the reset button this year and try to get back to, you know, the mentality that with. Uh, we had built on and less of the uh, me and more of the we mentality. So we had a lot of me mentality last year and it just it kind of killed us. And when you look at that mentality, you know what I mean? Obviously you look at it with the culture we're in now, you know I mean? You look at these offers, you know, I mean like it, and, and it's, a, and it's a challenge obviously. Um, and, and it sometimes it comes back to kill you. But when you look at, when you look at Berkeley football and, you know, you kind of, you had your ups and downs, peaks and valleys. Um, you know, and then you look at the off season. You know, coming up. Um, and then you look at what you've done this off season. Um, any changes that you made this off season to change the commitment, the mental mindset of the team? Um. Yeah. Um. You know, we've uh, we've gotten ourselves a uh, uh, strength and conditioning coach on the roster now um, with uh, Jocko Blary and. Um, you know, instead of me being the guy up there every day, we've got a guy that's been committed to that. He's been doing great getting turnout going up there. Um, our defense coordinator, Mike Winborn, he's been up there every day. Um, just getting kids excited about working out and, you know, getting back to winning and everything else. Um, it's we're, we're, we're young this year, but the mentality around the program is, you know, we're going to beat people by outworking them. Um, and it's really shown with uh, Coach Winborn and uh, Coach Larry and really pushing guys to get in the weight room and, and be at workouts. 
Talk about your standout players. Obviously, you look at Berkeley. Um, I know there's been a lot. I mean, like, how's your quarterback situation going? Um, how's your um, – any standout players that OA Nation needs to know about when it comes to Berkeley this year? Um, so, right now, um, quarterback situation, uh, you know, right now, Sonny Cadillus is getting all of the number one reps. Um, you know, the kid's got a great arm. Um, you know, he – can move around a little bit. Uh, we're just trying to, you know, get his eyes to match his arm um, out on the field. And once those link up, I think we we got a kid that's kind of special right now. Um, you know, and it's he's gotten a couple offers already, but that's going to the the culture change of he's at everything. He's working. He's got guys out on the field without the coaching staff putting stuff together. You know, he gets the boys up the hurley to throw, run routes. Um, you know, really excited for him. Uh, take in as the leadership role this year as the quarterback. Um, we've got uh, a couple other seniors, uh, Maddox Mangahas. Uh, he's going to come in play tight end for us this year, possibly some D end. And uh, Fidel Traylor, um, big body receiver that we're, we're excited about. Um, hopefully he can come out there and make some plays for us and uh, get us some wins. We're going to – right now we're looking at we're probably going to have to pull up, you know, at least five, six sophomores just because this year being – the senior class being that COVID year freshman class mm-hmm. and numbers hurting so bad that, we're you know, we're going to have to ask a lot of young guys to step up and try to make some plays for us. And that comes down to program strength. Obviously, when you look at um, – you gave me some hints about program strength. Um, how is the program strength going right now? I know you, you've been hurting right now. Yeah, um, you know, it's the, the the senior class is real small. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the junior class is a little bit bigger, um, which, you know, hurts just those two COVID years kind of really kicked us in the butt there. But as far as the under uh, undergrades go, even with the five, maybe six sophomores we're pulling up um, and the incoming freshman class, we're looking at close to a 40-man JV roster. That's good. Um, so things are start. Yeah, yeah, things are starting to kick back up for us. You know, last year I tried to just run a freshman team, um, but unfortunately for us in that situation, there's not a lot of schools that we play that have freshman programs. So basically, I asked the uh, you know incoming freshmen to play a JV schedule, and uh, since learned my lesson on that one, and trying to just let the boys come in and play JV, have a little bit of sophomore help as freshmen. Too. And you look at, of course, I think. The picture said it best last year when you guys knocked off Troy Athens, um, 34-32 in that game. Um, I remember that picture. I mean, I've been seeing it recently on Twitter. Um, when you look at – Ber- year or the year, be- the, the year before? I think it was either last year. I'm not sure. but Last, last year our two wins were Royal Oak and Pontiac. Yeah, but I'm just talking about JV football, not – Oh, JV. I'm sorry, Sam. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about varsity. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. You know, I mean, like, I was looking at that, and um, I was looking at that, and, um, you know, I was saying, like, okay, maybe Berkeley might be back. You know what I mean? Who knows? We'll see. You know? No, it's, yeah, it's, you know, it's it's a matter of building everything up, um, you know, and it's trying to get kids to come out and, and keep them with us. Hopefully, we've got this big bond coming up here on August. Hopefully it passes and we can update our facilities and everything else and try to keep kids, you know, coming to Berkeley and keeping them around the program. Um, let's look at your schedule. I mean, like, I, I mean, like, oh, I forgot to, before I am um, talk schedule. Um, obviously, let's look at your defense. Obviously, you know, you had some struggles last year. Anybody on the defensive side that OA Nation needs to know about? Um, so our, our uh, DC is kind of changing up the defense a little bit this year. Um, and – we're really excited about uh, a couple of the sophomores. Uh, they're going to wind up playing linebacker for us. Um, and, um, you know, it's going to wind up being a, a matter of just scheming everything um, instead of, you know, the, the the standout, you know, like a Henry Pennington, you know, leading the, the defense type deal. This is going to be a complete group effort and just – Everyone rallying to the ball and trying to disguise things best we can to confuse the kids are seeming like they're getting a good grasp of it. So it's it's going to be more of a, a you know like I said a we defense this year than having any true big standouts. Um, of course, when you look at 
And then let's talk schedule. Obviously, when you look at, we're going to go non-conference first. Um, you open up the year with Walt Lake Central. I mean, like, this will be a very interesting matchup, of course. Um, you know, when you look at the um, Vikings, they've had some struggles in the Lakes Valley the last few years. But what's your thoughts about playing the Vikings week one? Um, you know, we're, we're excited for it. Um, it's kind of crazy. It turned out we're doing, uh, you know, a seven on seven passing league, uh, with Farmington and we show up and we find out that, uh, Wall Lake Central was there, which is pretty unusual for, uh, teams that play each other to be throwing against each other during the summer. Um, they've got some talent. They've got a couple of kids, a big body receiver that likes to go off for the ball. Um, a, a kid that, uh, we really didn't see on film, but. Glad we got a look at him. A nice little slot receiver kind of reminds me of uh, uh, Jake Kozlowski. Good speed, you know, mm-hmm. and can really break it open. Um, you know, just doing our best to bottle those type of kids up and uh, trying to give our offense as much of a chance at it. I think we match up well with them and should be a good competition come week one. And then, of course, you open up. You have week two. You got Troy Athens. Um, that'll be a very interesting matchup um, as well, of course. Um, co- you know what? Coach Tom Cook has done over there with Troy Athens. Um, I mean, like over 500 record, and then like the last two years. I mean, like, but haven't been able to make the postseason. Yeah, no, I, I, um, you know, I talked to Coach Cook at um, the you know coaches meeting back uh, last winter, and very, very impressed with what he's done there. You know, um, prior to last year, both times or the previous two seasons we played Troy Athens. You know. We were down uh, close games at halftime, and we're able to come back and fight back and get the wins. And last year, you know, they did not take their foot off the gas. Those kids played hard for them and kept it rolling. And, uh, you know, we expect to see the same thing, uh, you know, a Troy Athens team that's going to play all four quarters, not just the half. And that's a big testament to what Coach Cook's doing over there. And when you look at that game, you know, Berkeley and Troy Athens, they've had some close battles, not even besides varsity the JV, we talked about that previously. You know what I mean? So I think I expect to be a program strength battle between you two teams. Yeah, no, it, it, it should be good. It should be fun. Um, you know, both uh, with both varsity and JV levels this year, you know, it's, it's you know, been, been good games the past few years and expect to do the same thing this year. Um, and then, of course, you have um, week four, you take on Seaholm. This is going to be a tough matchup. We talked last year about you guys having to play Seaholm and having to deal with that veer. Um, I was just, when I looked at your schedule, I was just cringe when, when I looked at that game with Seaholm on the schedule. We're like, oh boy. Well, you know, it's, it's part of the deal doing the crossovers, um, you know, and uh, Jim's got a good program over there. Um, I think I drove by the field a few uh, weeks ago and there's, you know, shoot, over 100 kids out there. Um, wow. Real good program. Uh, real, yeah, real good team um, from top to bottom. And, you know, playing against the Veer is always fun. You know, like I said last year, luckily we have some experience with uh, both myself and uh, Mike Winborn, our DC, of, uh, coming off of uh, Chris Sikora's uh, uh, coaching tree and having some experience with the Veer. But, you know, last year they ran some zone work with it too that, you know, we weren't expecting. And they just kicked our butts off of it. And, um, you know, this year we're hoping to be able to make some adjustments. I'm sure they will too, and slow that offense down a little bit and uh, give us a chance to put the points up. Um, and then, of course, you have week seven. You take on Troy. Of course, Troy, when you look at Troy, obviously they've been to the playoffs the last few years. Um, um, when you look at the Colts, obviously a little bit different team they've been in years past. So, what's your thoughts about playing Troy week seven? Um, expecting the same thing is that we've we've had with Troy the past few years um good competitive games um you know I, I think there's one year that you know we kind of got pulled away from a little bit towards the end but um Troy's just always a good matchup with us I think they still have one of the block brothers um yep playing there yep. uh, I don't know if he's gonna play quarterback or running back no he's running back uh, playing running back um you know they've they've coaching staff there has done a great job, you know, um, got a lot of respect for those guys. I know their JV head coach was my seventh grade, uh, football coach and, and science teacher. Um, got a lot of respect for the guys over there at Troy. Um, you know, and, and I know losing a kid like, uh, I think white side, right? Yeah. They lost the area. It's white side. Yep. They still got Jalen Peacock back though. 
yep, yep. You know, and that, but that's just the thing is they, you know, they keep reloading back up with good talent that they've trained and worked on. And, you know, it's the, the games where, where we're winning by, you know, 20, 25 points are nice, but the fun games are the games with like Troy or Ferndale or, you know, Troy Athens where, we're fighting all the way to the fourth quarter and uh, hoping to expect the same thing from the game of Troy this year. And then, of course, your last game, we're taking on St. Clair Shores Lakeview, a team that likes to run a lot of the um, a lot of the wing T stuff. I mean, like, talk about having to play the Huskies week nine and having to deal with that wing T. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be a battle of, you know, up front, just um, trying to meet play against the meat that they have up there and uh, the good size and, and they just keep going at you, coming downhill at you, running hard. Um, you know, last year we, we held hard with them for about a half, um, almost three quarters and just finally that run game just kind of pounded us down. Uh, we're hoping that, you know, with the, the boys that we've had now that are in the weight room and just overall uh, strength that we've built, we can uh, line up and go mouth to mouth smash, smashing with them. Um, talk about your division. Obviously, when you look at the gold, I mean, like, we've talked gold last year a little bit, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you, like, have your thoughts about each team in the division. Um, we're going to start first with Pontiac, of course, when you look at the Phoenix, new coach, new, um, I mean, new coach, new system. Um, what's your, you get to go back to Pontiac this year, get to go visit the new field this year. So what's your thoughts about, um, about Pontiac? Yeah, um, it'll be nice to go uh, go to Pontiac. I know we played there two years ago, and the field wasn't completely done, but we at least got to play on the field, or the stadium wasn't completely done, um, you know. But it, it'll be uh, nice to go into there and see the finished project. Um, you know, with Pontiac, I was a, I was pretty pretty surprised that they let go of Coach Wade. I thought that he was doing a pretty good job there. Um, trying to build that program. And, you know, he talked to me and told me, hey, we're building a purple wall here, trying to keep the kids in the school. And, um, you know, it, it'll – they've always got good athleticism there. We'll see what the new coaching staff brings in. Um, you know, and it's, it's, gonna, it's just about, you know, a matter of time before that program really turns around and starts uh, being good competition. And um, we'll see if that happens this year. I, ex- I think Pontiac will get some wins this year. I really do. I mean, like, you look at the non-conference that they got. Um, it'll be very interesting to see um, how that how they do this year. I'm really excited to see how Pontiac does this year. Really am. And I, I hope so. I mean, it, it, you know, of course not against us. But, no. you know, it would be nice for Pontiac to start winning some games. It's just better for the league. It's, it's better for the bronze, you know, for everybody to, you know, better competition, builds better freaking teams. So, Yep. Um, I really hope they can start getting some W's this year. It'd be good for the kids, the program, the city. It'd be nice. Talk about Avondale. I mean, obviously, when you look at the Yellow Jackets, new coach, new system. You do have some familiarity with um with Coach Bob Myers. Of course, he was at Livonia Clarence. But I remember that game really well when you guys when you went to Livonia and won that game down there. Um, talk about Avondale. I mean, like, of course, the system that um and the new coach they have over there. Yeah, no. Um, again, another guy that uh, I've had some experience with, and talking to him after uh, after our game two years ago, which was you know back and forth, it was awesome. Um, you know, we we know what he wants to do, and that is just I think they threw the ball twice against us that game. Yep, they threw it only um, twice. I remember that game real yeah. well. Yeah, um, I remember talking yeah, about we, that. Ga- I remember talking about that game on my podcast. I think for about twenty minutes about that one, that, about <laughs> just that game alone. Cause that was a great win yeah. for you guys at the time. No, it was, you know, that was great. And, you know, I told the boys then that that's like, that's a playoff environment for us. Uh, it was their homecoming, everything else. It, and it was just a battle back and forth. Um, and, um, it, uh, you know, we're, we're expecting the same thing. Now he's at Avondale. Um, and Avondale always seems to have, you know, stud athletes back there, whether it's the Holloman brothers or, um, you know, the, gosh, I'm blanking on, uh, Justin um, Sykes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, they, um, they're, uh, he's going to have talent to work with and got good scheme. We know what he wants to do, but it's a matter of stopping it. So. Will not be an easy game. I'll tell you that much. You know, that will not be an easy game. That'll be for sure. 
Um, how about Ferndale? I mean, like, obviously, you had that rivalry with them, the Eagles, obviously. Um, talk about, I had Eric, I had Eric talk about the, um, the rivalry with Berkeley. Um, I mean, like, so talk about what's your thoughts on Ferndale. Um, so I know, uh, I know Eric wound up, uh, bringing the Charles Weiss guys on, um, you know, uh, as the OC and, uh, DC there now. Um, so they're going to look a little bit different offensively for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Eric's like, you know, just that the Ferndale games are always, we, we play them tough, but. We just can't get over that hill. The only win we have against them is the, uh, you know, the, the forfeit from the COVID game um, or from the COVID year. Um, this year we got them coming to us and really, really are hoping that we can uh, pull one out. But it, it should be another battle, you know, four quarters of just going back and forth. That just seems like, like what it is every year with us in Ferndale. And, um, you know, Coach Royal runs a top program over there and love playing them and, and I got the most respect for that guy and what he does. That should be a fun game, that's for sure, when you two play. And then talk about, obviously, one of my favorite trophies, the street sign. Um, it used to be the curb, now it's the street sign between Lexington and Catalpa. One of my favorite trophies. Um, talk about that game at Royal Oak. You know how that game always gets intense every year when you two play. Well, it's, you know... Um... <laughs> It's always fun. It's where we generally sell, you know, the most tickets to that game. Um, kids are all hyped up for it. You know, it's. I wish, I wish last year's team could have played that way. You know, against every other team that we played, like we did against Royal Oak. And um, it's just a great atmosphere. Students get crazy with it. Um, you know, we've got to change locker rooms so that you know our, our student sections don't go too crazy on the opposing teams at times. It's just good fun, um, you know, and me being a, you know, a Royal Oak Dondero kid and uh, loving the city I grew up in, it's, it's fun being able to go back to some of my, uh, you know, childhood friends and say, hey, man, we, you know, last three times we've gotten Royal Oak. So it's, uh, it's, it's even fun for me on the, on the, you know, trash talking aspect with some of my buddies and everything. It's great for the kids, communities. And when you, uh, we're looking forward to it. And when you look at that game, and I think obviously, and I've seen, I've seen the trash talking on both sides. I've seen the student sections at Berkeley and Royal Oak. They basically, just, I mean, they basically just do not like each other. I mean, I've seen it in football. I've seen it in basketball. I mean, like, you know, even in softball this year, of course, when I'm Royal Oak upset Berkeley and I'm softball, um, when you look at the rivalry between Royal Oak and Berkeley in all sports, I mean, like, what is your initial thought seeing that rivalry keep growing and growing? You know, you know, almost close to like the Hatfields and the McCoys. It looks like when describing this rivalry. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a that's a good way of putting it. I mean, it's to me, it's fun. Um, I love that it's going on. You know, and even last year, both programs didn't have good years, but. Playing in that atmosphere, coaching in that atmosphere, even though both programs didn't have the best record, and having the fans, the kids, the coaches, everyone so hyped up, it still gives you a nice little jolt. And having it continue to grow and grow, um, you know, Coach Campbell over there, um, he's a good guy, and uh, you know, I like I, my interactions with him have, have been pretty good. Um, you know, but once once the lights turn on on that uh, Friday night, it's go time, and it's just a fun atmosphere. Like I said, even if programs aren't doing great, it, you couldn't tell when we play that game. I mean, when I look at the Berkeley Royal Oak rivalry, it's probably one of my top five most favorite rivalries all time in the OAA. When you look at it, because of the hate, because of like you know, I mean, like even even at times, you know, when I, you know when you look at the rankings, when I did a couple of years ago, when I had you guys ranked pretty high. Um, in my projections, um, I think that, you know, when you look at that rivalry, you know, it kind of like has, if you're the underdog, you have something to prove. And it looks like the last few years, you know, you guys have had Royal Oaks number the last few years. And it's, it's kind of like, it's really fun to explain that rivalry, you know, that, you know, if you've been dominating people, you know, it really hasn't been that much of a rivalry. 
Well, I mean, it's it, it goes back and forth. I mean, you know, my first couple of years at Royal Oak, uh, or sorry, at Berkeley, um, you know, Royal Oak, you know, hand, handled us pretty easily. Um, you know, the playoff game that went, that uh, you know we beat them that uh, that was a close, good game. The past two years have been a little one sided, but it goes back and forth. I think with Royal Oak, um, you know, with Coach Campbell, I think they'll have some stability there now too. Um, and it'll get back to being more competitive and, and going. Um, you know, it's it's tough to – it's it's very tough, like you said, with the sea home thing. You know, we go and coach uh, Coach DeWalt – or, you know, play against Coach DeWalt's team. Well, he's been there 10-plus years, you know. Um, and it's just tough when, you, when you're when going through coaches a little bit like Royal Oak has. Hopefully they get some stability and uh, we get back to getting some interesting rivalry. Um, before I let you go, Coach um... – any uniform changes? You've been talking to me about new uniforms last year at Media Day. You were saying we're going to get new unis and all that. Um, any changes this year with the uniforms? Yep. So this year um, we uh, got new uniforms for the varsity. We're going to have uh, blue tops um, with uh, for home uh, with white pants and then uh, white pants with white jerseys for away. Uh, we changed the helmet to a maroon color. Ooh, interesting. Uh, we're, we're keeping- Yep, we're keeping the bear claws on one side of the uh, helmet for the decal, the scratch marks, and then we're going to put the player's number on the other side of the helmet. This year. Interesting. I mean, like, interesting design. I mean, like, you know, going to maroon helmets, you know, um, going back to the old tradition, it looks like a little bit with the um, with the pants. I mean, like, going, because I remember under the Chris Aquarius, years, you know, you had white pants at home and you had the um, blue top, you know, so kind of going back to that tradition. We're going a little bit back to that. I'm not going to not going to pull your leg too much. Um, it was literally a uh, cost decision on that one for mm. the uh, wearing white pants. But, uh, you know, I, I, I do like doing the matching top and bottoms. But, you know, it's we, we got to put money into the program for it, into other spots other than having, you know, the, the blue or pants or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, they should be looking sharp. We can't wait to get the decals on the helmets once we start in August and get them the full fit together. But the uh, kids are excited. They all like it. So it's, uh, it's a good little combo. That's a good combination. Um, before I let you go, um, what is your expectations this year, Coach? Um, Coach, what is your expectations? Uh, my expectations every year, Sammy, are what they are every year. If, if, I, if they change, then I may as well stop coaching. It's to win the league. Um, you know, we haven't gotten there yet. Um, we've gotten pretty damn close a couple of times, but, uh, the, the expectation every year is we want to bring home a, a league title and then we'll let the chips fall after that. But, uh, that's every year. Let's, let's win our league and, uh, we'll go from there. Berkeley coach, Sean Shields. Um, thank you for joining us on the podcast. I will see you on media day, um, coming up later in the, um, um at the beginning of the month of August. So coach Sean Shields, thank you for joining us this week and, um, Good luck this season. Thank you, Sammy. Have a great one. You too. All right. Bye. Of course, that was Berkeley coach Sean Shields in the pod here. Um, obviously, when you look at Berkeley this year, and I think, you know, it comes down to meta mindset with them. It, it, it just comes down to that. I mean, like, when you really look at a team that, you know, you have a me over we culture, that's not a good sign. You know, that never has been and never – and, and it should never be. You know, football is a team sport. It's not an individual sport. And obviously, when you look at when you look at the course, that's one of the reasons why they struggled last year. So, I'm very curious to see what happens there with um, when you look at the schedule, um, with Berkeley's schedule. I mean, like, I, I think there's some games that they can win. I mean, like, I think there's going to be some games. I think, I think they could be in for a bounce back year. I really do think that they could be in. For another really good bounce back year. I mean, but we'll see. Um, I'd like to thank Coach um, Eric Royal of Ferndale and Sean Shields of Berkeley um, for talking to us this week here on the pod. Um, let's go now from football. Let's go to girls basketball. Obviously, the um, news of the day at Troy. Um, Laura Guzman takes over the um, Colts girls basketball program um, for Julius Porter. Porter stepped down earlier in the month, um, and then Guzman took over two weeks later. So, Guzman, of course, comes over from Farmington. Um, 
obviously, when you look at the record that Troy has, um, you know, I mean, like, um, you know, Troy really struggled last year winning three games. And obviously, when you look at the um, record that Troy has, you know, Troy, we know Troy's a very good team. Very good, very proud team. And, you know, I mean, I remember the quarterfinal run they had last year in Julius Porter. So, when you look at Guzman's record, you know, she was 55 and 64 in her six years at Farmington. And, you know, you look at a course getting wins, it's very important, yes. But it's just building a foundation. I mean, Guzman's been known for building, re, um, rebuilding projects and turning them into, turning them into something. You look at what she's done at Farmington. Um, you know, I mean, like, last season for Troy, it was a rough road for them. I mean, they were, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, 319. That's not easy to, that's not easy. Um, and then, you know, and then also what didn't help their cause was they were in the red. So, you're a young team going into a very tough division, going against the likes of a Clarkston, Lake Orion, West Bloomfield, Rochester, Stony Creek. Um, that's not fun. That is not fun. Going against those teams, having to play them twice. Um, so when you look at what Guzman brings, she does bring some stability. She also coaches softball at Troy. So that's another, that's another, um, so she, now she adds girls basketball into this, um, into her, um, resume. So kind of on a mileage, mileage point, it does help her. Now she gets to coach at Troy for both, um, basketball and also softball. So when you look at Troy as a team. I mean, like, obviously, you know, you have Diamond Prince, you have um, Reagan Zider, you have Olivia Sprangler, and then Carly Higginbotham, and Ali Mantuza. Um, you look at, obviously, there is a young nucleus on this team. There really is, when you look at Troy. And I know I talk a lot about Macy Zider a lot. And I know, and I've seen what she can do. Um, but when you look at this Troy team, you know, they just got to keep building, keep finding that foundation. If they can do that, then I think they can do some damage this year. They just got to keep building on what they're doing. And I think they have a chance to do that. Um, now there are some pros and cons about Guzman, about Guzman, you know, that I do like and I don't like. What I like about Laura is, one, she stabilizes the program. Um, a thing that I don't like is when you look at her scheduling. Obviously, when you look at scheduling, and I was really critical of Farmington when she was there, saying, like, well, you got to play some tough teams. I mean, you got to really toughen it up. I mean, like, even, even when Farmington had good teams, they just didn't really tough it up, and it ended up hurting them in the NPR. So that's the one thing I'm really concerned about with this hire is you look at an NPR situation, you look at strength of schedule component. I mean, yes, it's important to get wins, but you know, I think playing a tough schedule should help, you know, and win those tough games. That's going to help you, you know, it'll help you. And Troy does have a tough schedule coming up. Um, despite going down to the blue division, um, going down from the red, I think that experience will help them. But, that's the only concern I have with Guzman's hire is she's going to have to really toughen up the non-conference, you know, because now you're looking at it now is you're going from an NPR standpoint where, you know, you could possibly be seated and getting a bye um, to, you know what I mean? And then, you know, you're looking at, of course, then you got to look at your body of work. You got to look at, of course, how your strength of your team is. So there's a lot to work to look at. So I, I, I wasn't surprised Goodman was going to be the coach at Troy. I really wasn't. Um, now she's going to have to put together that program. And I know a lot of people have been really excited about that over there at Troy. I mean, I mean, really excited. But, you know, I'm curious to see what type of changes she's going to make. Um, is the offense still going to be the same that it was under Julius over at Troy? Um, Obviously, I'm curious to see how she does with Diamond Prince. 
Um, but she has coached some. Um, but she has coached some um, really good players. I mean, you know, Anna Barrett, perfect example. Um, and when you look at when you look at Troy, um, when you look at Troy, uh, they got athletes there. I mean, program strength has been solid there in years past over there. I mean, like, so, but I'm really curious to see what she does there. The division she's in, um, you got Southfield in there. She, I mean, like, Troy does know Southfield pretty well. Going against them twice last year. Um, they got Guzman's former school, Farmington's in that division. You got Rochester Adams is in there. I think Adams is going to be improved. Talked to Joe Malberg a couple weeks ago on the pod. Um... Also, Troy Athens is in there. Of course, Stacey Clump's done a really good job of that program. Um, and also, Seahams in that division. Actually, no, Seahams in the Whites. So, when you look at the division, um, actually, Berkeley's in that division. I take that back. I mean, Berkeley, and I think I expect Berkeley to be improved in that division. So, I think it'll be interesting to see. I think Guzman's higher. I think Troy's in the middle of that blue conversation but you know Southfield's going to be the favorite but I still don't trust that team defensively I think Adams is going to be better I think Troy Athens is healthy especially with the healthy Alex Alex Link back I think it's going to be improved and I think Berkeley you know with the stability under coach Clay Shaver and a determined Mavi Nolan I think it's going to be a team that could be really dangerous. So that blue division is not going to be as easy as you think it will be. And then you look at, of course, the district. Of course, Troy's in a district with with Troy Athens. They're our tribal. Is that Troy? I mean, like, they have Bloomfield Hills. Well, I think it's going to be really good this year coming up. I mean, I'm really ex- curious to see how Coach Kristen Massey has with, um, obviously, the players they got back. Ruby Smith, Ashley Fordner. Um, they got others as well, but Boopy Hills, they're going to be scary. Seahome's always tough-minded, um, and then, of course, there's Avondale. I mean, Avondale, obviously, with the transfers, um, Morgan McPherson coming over from Adams, and then also, um, and then also Nevaeh Wood coming over from Oxford, um, really curious to see how... Coach Roy Krishman's going to do this. And he had Madison many weathers into that mix. Um, so, just really curious to see how um, Troy, really curious to see how, how Troy does in this, in this district because they are a team that they could surprise some people, but also, you know, they could be a team, you know, and I, I think Troy's a team that could be, under the radar a little bit because you look at, of course, the season they had last year. They lost to Seaholm in the district first round. That should be enough to motivate them this season. The fact that it's a whole new fresh start for Troy. It's a whole new fresh start for them. I mean, can they win a district this year? Probably not. I mean, but they have a shot because you got... But, I mean, they could be a sleeper. Who knows? So, that's something to really, really watch for going forward there. Is Ken, is Ken Troy, you know, find a way, you know, are, can they find a way to gel with their coach, Lord Guzman? Can, there has to be a transition period. And for both fans, it's unfortunate to hear this, but the transition period, unfortunately for them, has to happen during the season. So, there's a lot to really look at with Troy is, can they handle the changeover? Can they handle the coaching transition to Laura Guzman? Can, Gu- can Guzman handle the players? That's going to be the big question. And when they get in the postseason, can Troy overcome, you know, the fact that they're going to be an underdog, dealing with Bloopy Hills, dealing with them, um, and also dealing with um, Avondale. Of course, Avondale in the gold division, but... As I mentioned, those two transfers coming in um, going to really give them a spark this season. So a lot to really look at when you look at Troy. Um, a lot to be excited for if you're a Colts fan, but also there is that danger as well. So 
you know, that's something to really look forward to, you know, when you look at Troy coming up this season. Uh, my final thoughts this week, obviously, a lot to look at. Um, I'd like to thank Coach Sean Shields and Coach Eric Royal for coming on the podcast this week, um, th- for calling in on the pod this week. Um, we'll see what happens. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OAA. We're also going to keep an eye on the girls' basketball coaching situation at Farmington. Um, so we're going to see what happens going forward there. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Take care. God bless. And I will see you all next week, everybody. Take care and see you all next week. God bless. Y'all.